Hi and welcome. This is the first of a couple of series of videos that I have created in order to assist students on how to uh, solve uh, series or different scenarios in dynamics and apply the different laws of uh, Newton's law of motion for that uh, matter uh, on different scenarios like this. So first, let us solve for the, sta the coefficient of friction, so mu coefficient of friction, and the maximum force so that our block will stay at the same state of motion. Okay, so the state, same state of motion. Same state of motion means that whatever the initial condition is, it should be the same final condition. So in this case, we have an initial condition means zero. So velocity that is zero, it means it's not moving. And then it's still not moving at the end after applying this force F. If the block has a mass of M, what would be the maximum amount of force required? Okay, maximum amount of force required in order to keep the block at the same state of motion. In this question, first one, we have mu, which means the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction, that we're trying to solve here, has something to do about the state of motion. So it means that friction do exist, but since it's not moving, it should be coefficient of static friction. So therefore, we are trying to solve for the coefficient of static friction. So mu s, mu s. First step is for us to draw a free body diagram. So how do you properly draw a free body diagram? Again, okay, it is required that you just draw the applied force. Not applied force, I'll be correct, I'll be correcting myself there. It should be the actual forces and not the components. Okay, so just the actual forces. It can either be a contacting force or maybe it's it's another kind of force that is applied at a distance. Okay, so applied at the distance. So applied force, we have contacting force, and then uh, we have one that is called the gravitational force. Okay, so how do you make it simple? Okay, how do we start drawing the free body diagram? First one is to assume or to make this assumption imaginary x and y axis. Okay, so an imaginary x and y axis where I'm going to draw the dot right here. And this imaginary x and y where this is your y axis and this is my x axis. So it means that this block can move either a y axis or x axis, sideways or up and down. But in this condition, we're talking about the x component velocity condition. But of course, a block is on the ground, on the table, and it's not moving, so definitely we are also just saying that it's not going up or down. Here, let us start by writing down our free body diagram. Okay, so how do you draw your free body diagram correctly? Make sure that you scale it correctly or scale. So if it is not moving or it's not changing its state in motion, not change in state of motion, so it means whatever the velocity is, or whatever condition it is in the beginning all the way to the end as we are trying to solve the problem, it shouldn't be changing. So it means that the net force is zero or they're equal or the forces acting opposite direction should always be equal or the net force is equal as according to Newton's first law of motion. So if I'm going to draw this dot, isolate that dot into this section over here in my graphing paper. Okay. So the first force that acts on the object is our force of gravity, which is Fg. And then what opposes your force of gravity is the normal force. If you're going to ask me, how come it's going to be the same length? Of course, it's going to be the same length because it's equal amount of forces. So the net force will be zero because you have equal amount of forces, equal and opposite in terms of direction. Now we have our applied force, which is going to the right. So if I have my F over here, there should be another force that is preventing it from moving. Or else it will move to the right if there's no other force that is holding it from moving to the right. 
Okay, so that force should be equal in terms of magnitude, but opposite direction. We all know that this block is touching the surface of the table, and we are required to solve for the uh, coefficient of friction. And to be exact, since it's not moving, it's coefficient of static friction. So we know that friction, force of friction, do exist. Force of, force of friction do exist, so therefore FF, and you have the applied force F on this side, FG in the bottom, and then FN. So all the arrows should be drawn with the same length or equal in terms of magnitude or else it will not balance the forces. So what are some of the definitions that we know? Okay, so force of gravity is basically the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength. The gravitational field strength. G. Okay. The gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity, um, it's either our gravitational mass or is it the uh, the the Aside from the uh, gravitational mass, we have the inertia mass. I'm sorry, I, I got buckled over there. So the inertia mass. So force equal Fg is mass times G. Now we have force of friction, which is mu multiplied by the normal force. Mu multiplied by the normal force. So if we want to figure out mu, and in our case, we're talking about static friction because it's not moving, so we can just simply say that force of static friction is mu or coefficient of static friction multiplied by Fn. So that will be our first condition. Also, we all know, okay, we have mentioned earlier that there's no mo change in the state of motion. There's no change in state of motion. So I can say that the acceleration along the x-axis, so acceleration. So these are some of the conditions that we found out. Acceleration. So the acceleration along the y-axis, since it's not moving up or down, or if it's moving, it didn't stop. Okay, In our case, it's not moving at all. So it is considered zero because there's no change. In our x-axis, it's the same condition. We started at zero, we end up at zero. So it's still, the acceleration is zero. So there's no change in the state of motion. There's no change in the state of motion. So for letter A, the first step that I would do okay, is to come up with the summation of forces. So I would say the summation of forces along my y-axis is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration along the y-axis. But since my y-acceleration or the acceleration in my y-axis is zero, I can just equate this to zero. Or, as we move on, what is the positive force or what is the force that's going up on your y-axis? That's definitely our Fn, or normal force, minus Fg, which is our force of gravity. The mass of the object, which is m, multiplied by the acceleration, zero. So therefore, I can just simply say that Fn minus Fg is equal to zero. By moving our force of gravity to the other side of the equation, so we know that the normal force is simply equivalent to our force of gravity, or the weight of the object. But also, in our equation, we know that force of gravity is simply the mass multiplied by the, by the acceleration due to gravity, or some might use the gravitational field strength G. Okay, so gravitational field strength G. Okay, so we have this section right here. Now, my question is, how about if we take the summation of forces along the x-axis and do the same process? and with our acceleration on your x-axis. We all know that acceleration also is zero, but before we proceed with that zero, summation of forces at x, so we have F 
positive to the right minus force of friction that is equivalent to mass multiplied by a x which is zero so now i know that force of friction is equal to ff zero so the applied force is f f so basically we were able to solve for the equation solve for question letter b what is the maximum amount of force that we can apply in order to to keep the same state of motion so it means that the amount of force that we must apply should not exceed the force of friction and what is that force of friction equivalent that force of friction is equivalent to mu multiplied by the normal force the coefficient and to be exact this is the coefficient of static friction so the coefficient of static friction and we all know from the first summation of forces that we have done along the y-axis that force normal force is simply equivalent to the force of gravity or weight so we can say that this force is simply the static friction coefficient of static friction multiplied by the mass and the g which represents the gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity so this will be our answer to question B. So this is our answer to question B. And even though I said let's solve for letter A first, sometimes you know you don't know which order do we have. So let's solve for the coefficient of friction. So by using our answer for letter B, F is mu S M and g okay so we want to express our answer in terms of of constants and given information so all we have to do is divide both side by m and g so we have mu s on one side of the equation or we can say that the coefficient of static friction is simply f divided by m over g and this is our answer to question letter A. So in our next video it will be a different condition but we will still apply the same laws of motion and steps that we are doing. See you in the next video.